I'm here with Phoebe from Heaven the Axe. How are you doing today? Hey, how are you, Mark? Doing good. What have you guys been up to since uh, the CD got released? Well, we released the CD in September in Melbourne, and then we did a whole bunch of shows around Australia in uh, cities and in regional areas, uh, which was unreal. And um, we've been working on a video clip, and we've just done a three-state tour in January, which was a lot of hard work and had lots of fun driving around in a van with boys, which was, which was interesting. And then we've just uh, come home now and we're writing new material and working on the new the film clip. So we're going to be finishing that soon because we haven't got one yet. So people are oh. going to be expecting the film clip for the song Enemy, correct? That's exactly it, yes. We've been working on it for a while. We did a big shoot with about a cast of 100 people <laughs> there, but we had to actually reshoot it. Um, so that was a lot of fun and we've done a few scenes that didn't quite work the way that we wanted them to so we didn't want to put anything out there that was pretty crappy we wanted to put out something that was really really good so we've just been holding up on it and making sure it's right before we get it out there what are your views on the downloading music issue uh, I know a lot of people they give away music for free and a lot of people have to get the CD sales in order to fund all their other band projects. Where do you stand on this issue? Well, I'm all for giving musicians money wherever possible, but I, um, I also understand the need to get the music out there, and without being able to have people hear your music, then they're not going to know about you. So um, I think that there's definitely a space for giving the music away for free to some capacity as long as it's packaged in the right way and it's in the right situation. Uh, I don't think that it's great to give away your whole record and things like that, but however, people can most certainly have proven me wrong. It may have worked really well for them. Um, but I think it's very important that people understand the value behind the music because we respect our music a whole lot um, and so we really want the universe to support that um, that sense of being when it comes to our music and, and the way we put it out there because uh, the reality is we've put eons of time and effort and blood, sweat and tears and a lot of money into developing it and for, you know, the small price of the CD then it's, um, it, it's certainly worth it if somebody likes your music to purchase it but in saying that again, then yes, there's definitely proper ways to put it out there for free so that people do get a sample of, um, of your sound and are able to take something with them. Um, in this day and age, you know, the, the, the internet certainly changed the way that music is getting out there. Um, I do listen to radio or try to listen to radio and it's, um, you know, while our music has definitely had some great airplay, it's there's other ways to really get the music out there and, and by having it broadcast on the internet then that's certainly one of the best ways to do it. Now a lot of bands out there uh, they have different personas on stage and you have been one of those people that has that that really wild persona and you've been quoted as saying that you have that on stage persona where you like to just break free. Do you feel sometimes that with the two personas, with your on-stage presence and your off-stage, which which one are you more comfortable being? Mark, you have to explain to me. I don't understand how you see the two different differently because I, I do think about this a lot and I do think that who I am on stage is, is definitely me. I just, I want to know wh why you think that it's two different personas. Well, I... A lot of people have said, and I've done other interviews where people have said, when they step on stage, it's kind of something that clicks on and they feel maybe a little more free to do something, maybe uh, a little more uh, motivated by the crowd to, and uh, by their music, that feeling something on stage with the music that maybe they, they slightly are a little bit different, a little more open than they are off stage. I know some people that are actually like really outgoing on stage 
But then when they step off stage, they're like completely quiet. Yeah. Yeah, look, when I've, I've had been at gigs, you know, um, where, you know, you're playing really late, you've loaded in the rain, you're exhausted, you've driven hours to be there. Um, you put your sweaty costume on that hasn't been washed from the night before, you feel like shit, but as soon as you walk on stage, something definitely takes over you. Most likely your brain just pumping shitloads of adrenaline into your body and the crowd there, it definitely some energy takes over you and you are able to put it out there, you know, and put on a show. It, it's it's so much fun. It's definitely what we live for is, is that on stage energy. We absolutely love it, definitely. But I, th I think, um, you know, and I have thought a lot about this, you know, what is it that people are going to connect to when they come and see us play live? And and if you've had a look into the backstory of who we are, we've been pretty honest about who we are as artists because basically that's what the songs are about. That's the journey of the band. That's how the musicians got together um, and how the band was created. You know, if you, if you actually look into the history of who we are as people, um, the on stage and the off stage will start to make a lot more sense to you. You've said in some interviews and stuff, I've, I've read some stuff that said, like, you know, you like to make people feel when they come to a concert that they're free of their jobs and everything else and like it's a so I didn't know if that was maybe a part of you too that also likes to feel that way when you're on stage that kind of likes to let everything go and just kind of you know just shut everything off and that's yeah, what some people sure. do definitely when I go out and you know make the effort to go out and there's a lot of the time I spend here in this band room around this house um, which is which is where we live and most of the band stays here half the week and, and we really do spend a great deal of time together but when I make the effort to go out and see a band you know I want to be transported you know I want I want to be completely free I want to want to dance and I, I want to forget about my to-do list that's a million miles long you know I, I want to um, I want to see a fantasy I want to see people that are living a different life than me. I want to see something that's out of the ordinary and that's what I try and bring to my live show. What do you think distinguishes Heaven the Axe from other bands? What do you think sets you apart from all these other bands that you guys can stick out? Um, I really don't know. I think there's heaps of bands that are doing um, doing some amazing things. Um, I think I think there's a lot of bands that um, might might not have as much honesty as we do. Um, we're really not saying <laughs> anything about anyone. I just think we're a really honest band. You know, if someone was going to walk around follow us around with the camera for a few days and see what we're really about, you know, they'd say <laughs> we're heaps like Spinal Tap, but the real life one, you know. Have you ever seen Spinal Tap and that chick sits down with the astrology charts and says, right, we can't go on tour because Mercury's in retrograde and we're definitely like that. I, I talk to the boys like that for sure <laughs> when it comes to astrology. But um, um, I don't... I. I don't think I've seen another band like us, um, in all honesty. I'm really excited by it. If I heard it, I'd like it. So really, it's up to everyone else to have a listen, see if it connects with them, if it's their cup of tea or not. It's not for everyone. I guess that's why we like it. What are your short-term goals uh, for the band this year, looking forward to the rest of the year? Well, currently we're planning some uh, pretty big interstate tours. We've got two coming up to different parts of Australia, and we are finishing the video clip, which is going to take up a massive amount of our time. Um, so basically, yeah, that's the short-term goals. And, and also we're writing pretty much every day, we're writing something, and that's definitely our main priority, is to get the live material um, really new and, and excited because that's what we love doing is writing music. Now the new stuff that you're writing now, is that compared to the first album, would you say it's 
on par with the first album? Is it heavier? Is it more melodic? How would you compare it with the stuff that you wrote for the first album? Uh, well, the new stuff is, is there's heavier stuff. Um, there's, there's things where we've uh, been able to really get excited about what makes people move live. So we're, we're really working hard on, on that. And we do have a song that we're already playing live at the moment that we've just written. And it's called, um, Why Don't You Leave It To The Monkeys So We Can Get It On. And it's inspired by just like putting the record out, being too busy to have sex. And, and that was appalling. So I had to write a song about it, of course, and not have sex at that point as well, because I was writing a song. <laughs> so we, um, that song's really groove, like you can really feel it. There's a lot of our songs are really busy, there's a lot going on. And they're written from, you know, the structure of the songs, like I write them on the acoustic guitar basically, and a lot of them are verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus kind of format. Whereas now um, we really feel like we're inundated with a lot of very creative bands that we're inspired by, and we really want to experiment with the direction of, of how we can make a new sound and, and inspire ourselves more, more than anything. So, yeah, we're really excited about it. Now, it seems like uh, as far as getting music out there, I know there's a lot of uh, avenues on the internet for that as well, and I know uh, like internet radio and uh, indie radio has been really big at, at picking you guys up at very various places like all over the place and uh, distributing your music around. Um, and we probably have to give a couple shout outs here. I know uh, uh, the person I work with, Matt at Run For Your Life, he plays your music all the time, so I have to give a shout out to him. So we gotta hi, say hi, hi Matt. <laughs> you rock! Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Canada's really been pretty big about playing your music. I know uh, there's also, I gotta give a shout out, he's been a big supporter of our side as well, uh, John from, uh, it's a program called Sugar and Spikes Music. Yeah, I love that. I, I listen to the podcast when I go for a run, it's awesome. Yeah, he's actually, uh, he, he hit me up the other day and he's, I know he's got you playing on the, the show that's coming up, the very next show, he's got your uh, music playing on there, he told me. So Excellent. He, so he was looking forward to this interview. Excellent. Hi, thank you. So we have to give a shout out to our Canadian uh, radio support. You guys rock, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you guys find that you get the most support from as far as either airplay or maybe distribution or how do you find uh, is the biggest avenue right now that your music is being spread? Um, I don't know. Just um, I guess Facebook's really important. Um, I really don't know. We we get a, our music's used a fair bit on telly as well here in Australia on some extreme sporting TV shows, which is great. Um, but it's really you know, doing the hard work yourself. You've, you've got to put it out there and spread it yourself and email heaps of people and send it out. But um, I think, yeah, I really don't know. Hopefully YouTube soon when the video clip comes out, it'll be spread a lot more. But yeah, I'm not a record label, so I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm writing the music and I'm putting it out the best way that I can. And, um, and we're very pleased with the response and, and very grateful to everyone who's shared our stuff, told someone about us, come to a show, all of that. I just want to say thank you so much for your support and coming to our shows. Thank you so much to everyone around the world that's heard our music and spread it, all the guys at the radio shows that are playing it. It means so much to us. We are definitely here working every day um, on being better and greater and getting the word out to everyone we can. So everyone that does spread it means very, very much to us. So we're very grateful. And at the end of the day, we hope that when you're driving around with our CD in the car, you sound like the meanest, toughest car driving down the street. Or you have the loudest stereo in your street and we hope your neighbours are really pissed off because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. So thank you very much. All right. Well, thanks for spending the time with us today. Thank you, Mark. Cheers. All right. Thanks.